Hey, Shalom Most High and Christ Best. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today, you got Captain Emmanuel of IUIC, Arkansas. And today, we dealing with respect and disrespect in regards to brethren and leadership. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. The book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 17. Go ahead. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. So the Bible commands us to honor all men, right? So let's put the definition of honor on the screen. What does it mean to honor all men? Let's read that. Honor, high respect, great esteem. So the Bible is commanding us to respect all men. You understand? The Bible takes respect very, very seriously. So let's get Matthew 7 and verse 12. So in short, right, how do you respect men like yourself, right? Let's read that. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Come on. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. So the way that you will want to be spoken to, the way that you will want to be addressed, the way that you will want to be dealt with, read on. Do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Because that's what the Bible teaches us from front to back. How to treat others as we want to be treated. And how is that? With respect. All right. Go to Sirach chapter 28 and verse 17. So one of the main ways in which we normally feel disrespected or disrespect others it's with our words, right? Watch this, 28, 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 17. Go ahead. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, Uh huh. but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Right, so if you take a belt, a, you know, any form of a whip, and you whip somebody with it, it'll leave a bruise, right? But that person, you know, that spot on their flesh, and you, ah, but... They can still walk. They can still shoot a basketball. You understand? But the stroke of the tongue will break the bones. Meaning what? It will do more damage than a physical whip. It can injure somebody. You understand? It can be very hurtful, the words that will come out of your mouth. So we got to be mindful. All right? Watch this. Go to Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. Y'all better take heed to this. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Right. You don't always got to handle or approach situations with aggression, especially if somebody is already at that level, right? In order to tone a situation down, a de-escalated situation, which a real man should be able to do, it can be done with a soft answer you understand read on but grievous words but what but grievous words but grievous words read stir up strife they escalate the situation they make the situation worse and that often within our community will escalate to violence you understand so we we definitely have to in order to stop the violence and curve the, these things that plague our community we have to first learn how to address one another respectfully as men. Message. Right? So now, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 3. Uh-huh. When the wicked cometh. When the what? When the wicked cometh. When a wicked man come around, read. Then cometh also contempt. Can we read that definition? So when a wicked man comes around, then you're going to see or hear contempt. All right. Watch this. Contempt. The feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, uh -huh. worthless, or deserving scorn. Now let's read this. The similar words. Read. Similar words. Uh huh. Scorn, disdain, disrespect. What? Disrespect. So God says, when the wicked cometh, that's when you will encounter disrespect. So if you a disrespectful brother. You wicked. You wicked. Go back to Proverbs 18, verse 3. Damn. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse 3. Go ahead. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. Uh-huh. And with ignominy, 
reproach. Jump down to verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. A fool's lips enter into contention. So a fool's lips, that wicked brother, that disrespectful brother, he's always going to start arguments and contention. And watch this. Read on. And his mouth. His caught. mouth, the things that come out of his lips, read. Call it for strokes. It call it for what? For strokes. You know what strokes is? <laughs> That's what you call into yourself when you disrespectful. You are provoking a man to lay hands on you. That's why we got to learn these scriptures, y'all. Watch this. James chapter 3, verse 9. James chapter 3, verse 9. The book of James, chapter 3, and verse 9. Go ahead. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Uh huh. And therewith curse we men. Right. So it's talking about our tongue. So with our tongue, we bless God. With that same tongue, we'll curse a brother. We'll disrespect a brother. Read. Which are made after the similitude of God. But those brothers who you being disrespectful to are made in the image of God. Read. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. Come on. My brethren. These things ought not so to be. So the message is, right, if you use your tongue to bless the Lord, then that same tongue should not be used to disrespect your brothers who were made in the image of the Lord. Message. It, it cannot be that way. You understand? If you're going to bless God with your tongue, you got to be respectful, likewise, to the sons of God. Period. All right, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, and verse 29. Uh -huh. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Right, talking crazy. Go ahead. But that which is good to the use of edifying. To the use of what? Edifying. Read. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Right, so that's how we should be speaking one to another, for the use of edification, not to tear a brother down, not to be disrespectful. All right, go to 1 Timothy, chapter 5. In verse 17. So watch this. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Come on. Let the elders that rule well let be. Let the who? Let the elders that rule well. The elders that rule well, meaning those that are in leadership positions. Read. Be counted worthy of double honor. So they receive double the respect that you would give or that you owe to your brother that is like unto yourself. The elders that have been laboring in this truth for years and years and years, and they rule well, they put in work, they are worthy of double honor. Go That's ahead. a fire precept. Especially right they who labor in the word and doctrine. They labor in the word and doctrine. Get that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12. Come on. And we beseech you, brethren. To know them which labor among you uh -huh. and are over you in the Lord. And are what? And are over you in the Lord. So again, this is making reference to the elders that rule well. The leadership. Read on. And admonish you. Read. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. To esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. What does that go back to? The definition of honor. In this case, double honor. Go ahead. And be at peace among yourselves. Go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Read it out. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7. Come on. Remember them which have the rule over you. Your leadership. Read. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. They've taught you. They've edified you. Read. Whose faith follow. Uh-huh. Considering the end of their conversation. Read verse 17. Verse 17. Read Come on. Out. Obey them that have the rule over you. So... Not only remember them, meaning consider them, but obey them. Do what they say. Read on. And submit yourselves. Read. For they watch for your souls. So you ought to obey what they tell you to do because they're watching for your souls. Just like a Message. parent knows what's best for their children, the leadership was set up by God to look out for your souls in the same type of manner. Go ahead. As they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Uh -huh. For that is unprofitable for you. So be mindful on how you deal with your leadership because they have to give an account and they don't want to do it with grief. 
They would rather do it with joy. If you're respectful and you give them the honor that's due unto them, then they're going to give the account of you with joy. You understand? So we have to be mindful of that. But unfortunately, a lot of brothers and sisters are not. Let's get 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Watch this. The book of 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10. Go ahead. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Meaning they out the spirit and they walking in the flesh. Read. And despise government. They despise government. They hate leadership structure. Go ahead. Presumptuous are they. They are presumptuous, meaning bold. Go ahead. Self-will. Self-will. They want to do their own thing. They don't want to obey them that have the rule over them. Go ahead. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. In those type of spirits, they are not afraid to be this damn spectful. <laughs> For real. Watch this. Acts chapter 23 and verse 5. God gave us laws against that, speaking evil of dignities. You understand? That is a sin. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 23 and verse 5. Uh-huh. Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. Read. For it is written, thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not speak evil of them that have the rule over you. So let's get what he quoting. Exodus chapter 22, verse 28. Watch this. Exodus 22, 28. The book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 28. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So this is what Paul is quoting. Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of your people. But the beginning of the verse says, thou shalt not revile the gods. What is it calling the rulers of your people? The judges among you. They are gods in this earth. That's why Message. they deserve double honor. All right, let's look up the definition of revile. Thou shalt not revile the gods. Read that. Revile. Uh huh. Criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner. In other words, disrespectful as hell. You understand? Damn. That's a law. You cannot do that. Now, watch this. Get Sirach chapter 7 and verse 29. Sirach 27, I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 29. The book of Sirach chapter 7 and verse 29. Come on. For the Lord with all thy soul. So this is a part of fearing the Lord with all your soul. Watch this. And reverence his priest. And do what? And reverence his priest. Y'all know the definition of reverence? Maybe not. So let's give it to him. Let's pull that up. Reverence. God said you need to reverence his priest. Read that. Reverence. Deep respect for someone or something. So that's the manner in which we are to treat the priests you understand that the elders the leaders amongst us they are to be treated with reverence deep respect all right last scripture first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10 the book of first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10 go ahead neither murmur ye neither what neither murmur ye because when you speak evil of your your leadership right and you you want to say slick things because you disagree and you don't want to simply obey them to have the rule over you, guess what? That was done aforetime. Paul is giving warning to the church of Corinth. Y'all better not do that. Why? Read. As some of them also murmured. As your forefathers in the wilderness murmured. Read. And were destroyed of the destroyer. They were what? And were destroyed of the destroyer. Sheesh. Read on. Damn. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. For what? For examples. So, you know, they say the Old Testament done away with. Paul said, hey, y'all better read that damn Old Testament because they are our examples. Watch this. And they were written for our admonition. For what? For our admonition. For our admonition, meaning to warn us. If we speak evil of our leadership, we will get similar consequences. 
You better shut your black lips. <laughs> Finish it out. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. And guess what? That's us. We are in the last captivity. Esau is the end of the world. So we got to look back on our forefathers and be mindful of how they dealt with the leadership. Those disrespectful Negroes, Korah, Abram, Dathan, so on and so forth, and the people that followed among them, the earth swallowed them niggas up. You understand? That's for our admonition. So we a we must be respectful towards one another as brethren and also towards our leaders. All right. So with that, Israel, shalom, most high, Christ bless. What is the nation? <laughs> the nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today.